So this is the set we are going to use. I think the kind of the properly carnation should be slightly bigger in size. So it looks exactly the same. Those I think are called garden paints and they are really, really, you know, full of fragrance. So they smell really nicely yes. when they are. But um, the same principle applies to the carnation, like the big one we normally buy from the florist shop. So I've already cut a few layers, but literally all you have to do is just go on the side and cut. Now the number of layers can vary depending on how full you want that flower to look like. So you might want a large flower, you might decide to do like three layers of the large um, with the large cutter, two, three with the medium and maybe two or three with, um, with the small. But the minimum layers would be like two of each to get a decent sized plant. And I'm going to start frilling. So putting those on the side. Now, I have to say this flower, it's really nice, but it puts a lot of pressure on your, on your wrist and on your hand because there is so much frilling involved. So you will get some crumbs, but then we'll have the, the break and we'll have time to relax. So all you have to do is just to go petal by petal and start frilling. Just putting pressure just backwards and forwards on the edge of the petal. I intend to use the Dresden tool, but if you prefer the ball tool, feel free to use it. Um, in here, it just doesn't work for me in the same way like it does for roses because I have to turn the petal around. Um, it makes no difference what tool I use, so I prefer to use my favorite one. You can also use the ball tool for this. You can use ball tool, you can use the cone tool. With the rose, I intend to use the ball tool because with the rose I don't have to turn the petal. I can just go around with, with this tool. If I were to use the Dresden tool for the rose, I will have to move that and it would be an additional movement, more time involved. While in here, even if I use the, the ball tool, I still have to move this around. So then I will go for my favorite, but you can definitely use this. Is in whatever I do, I always, always try to find a shorter and quicker way to do it. Um, Sometimes I end up losing more time just because I'm looking for a shorter path. But unless I try, I can't really come up with an idea about making it shorter because I think time is the most important thing we, yes. we have to deal yes. with. So. Even this method is, I'll probably say my method. I don't think anyone else does it quite like me because um, maybe one of my students. And again, just changing the position of hand so it doesn't get too many crumbs with my hand up or down or whatever, just to, because I say there's so much freeing involved. And if you make lots of flowers, Your hand will just get. Painful. Okay, doesn't matter if you get some paste attached to the tool, just clean it and carry on. Make sure that you keep the layers covered if the paste intends to dry fairly quick because um, it's very important to frill and you know, your frilling doesn't work if the paste is dry. And just put them all on the side. And then 
while they those will get a little bit dry i don't want them to fully dry i just want them to get half dry i will start making the base of my foundation i have to get some green pick um a color which you kind of intend to stick with if you want the green to be a bit darker just put some coloring make it a little bit darker um you can color with dust after if you like but you might actually stain some of the uh, the paste so um but for me this is just going to work fine so we're just going to knead a little bit just to condition then again if you feel a bit difficult rolling to get the paste with no cracks try and find a, an area free of all you know any cracks and come up with a little bubble like um, a baby dummy yeah and then flatten so it's a similar method with the mexican method but you've got a bubble in here instead of a pick yeah? and then you just need the edge and start rolling Okay, make sure you stretch so that you've got enough area here when you start cutting and also you really don't want to, to get a very thick finishing because that's going to be problematic when you all start frilling so you want this to be nice and and um, fine and I'm going to pick the large cutter but it can be the large or it can be the medium also the blob in the center make sure you don't make it huge otherwise it's not going to fit through your cutter so you place this in here and just keep shaking make sure that it's all nice and you get a clean cut okay then i'm going to start frilling this bit in the same way i did the petals And I'm going to get a 22 gauge wire. Uh, no, 20, sorry. I'm going to get a 20, 22 if it just feels a bit too fine. And I'm going to cut this in three. So that's like a four inch long. It can be longer or shorter depending on what you're planning to do with those carnations. I'm going to get my my plier and I'm going to put a hook on here. Yeah. Then just get my flower, place the wire through the center. Just going to catch my bubble. Then I'm going to get a bit of glue, put the glue on the base, then start building the flower with my largest petal first. Bit of glue, next petal, bit of glue, the other petal, bit of glue, and so on till I finish all my layers. Now if at one point you feel, oh I've got so many layers in here, then you can stop um, and Maybe just get okay, this little, I mean, it's a medium size, and I'm just going to fold and place that in, and maybe just get a tool to get it attached to the flower. So I don't always have to use the very tiny ones, but if I want to just complete the flower, I can put that in press it down then in press it down it's all a, okay all a matter of how full you want the flower to be like and then just tidy up the, the petals and just make the flower but it just looks like a 
a, a real flower yeah, and does. it's such a short time. Yeah. Yeah. I like this one. It's I like too. <laughs>